Hey, Kate, what days are today? Today's are some big days, Matt. Today's are some big days. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, but go with me. No, I like it. I like butchering the grammar on today's right? days. Yeah. Yes, I do. Today is National Pizza Day. Oh, yeah. Bagels and Locks Day. Okay. And yeah. Read in the Bathtub Day. Why not all three? Why not all three? Good call. Read in the bathtub, nosh on some bagel while you're in there. Yes. Bagel in one hand, pizza slice in the other. Yum. Yeah, don't let it get too sudsy, though. Or just don't drop your food in the suds. Yeah, don't drop your food in the suds. That'd be bad. You eat in the bathtub? I've been known to do that before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are some good bathtub things to eat? Oreos. Oreos in the bathtub. <laughs> you bring milk in there with you? I may have had a glass of wine with my Oreos. <laughs> yeah, are they dark chocolate Oreos? No, just regular. Does such a thing exist? I don't know. I'm going to search for it in the proud tradition of Matt and Kate. Dark chocolate Oreos. I mean, in the proud tradition of Matt and Kate, we internet search things. Oreo mm. thins, dark chocolate. Okay. All right. Bring some of those in there with you. Yeah, I've never had those. That sounds good. Do you like bagels and lox? Yeah, I'm not sure if I've ever had that directly, but I know I would. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've had the opportunity. I'm, I'm sure I've had the opportunity at like this Panera serve something like that. I don't know. Okay. I could see them serving something like that. And I have been to Panera, but not gotten that clearly. Gotcha. But you're more yeah. of a bath person than I am. So are you reading in the bathtub? Are you on your on Twitter in the bathtub? What are you doing in the bathtub? I will read on my phone in there. Yeah. Since they're water resistant now. Yeah. It did yell at me one day, though. It was like, you need to let your iPhone dry out a little bit. There's some water in the dock. Oh. I was like, ooh. And then it's been fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it didn't get messed up by the salt or suds or whatever. Working just fine. Plus, I have Apple nice. Care Plus. I got Apple Care Plus on this. Instead of rocking a case, I just pay that money instead. Okay. So my phone can be naked, Kate. You're wild. I know. Woo! Watch out. Do you read in the bathtub? Mm, I have before, yeah. Okay. I'm not a big bathtub taker. And you're missing that. Bathtub taker, bath taker. Bath, bath taker. If you're a bathtub taker, you might get arrested for that. Right. I hope she took another bathtub. We did talk about when we built the house doing a bigger bathtub so that I could take a bath comfortably. Oh, yeah. One of the it was a nice giant up price. And I was like, Mah, I'm okay. Oh, come on, Kate. <sighs> I'm jealous of the bathtub that you could have potentially had. Yeah, it was a deep one. I'm jealous of you in the bathtub that you could have potentially have. I'm not jealous of your bathtub. Right. Because, you know, I don't want to be a bathtub with your family in it, more or no. less. It's incredibly weird. Hey, Kate, we're just about a month away from daylight saving switch. Oh, yeah. You hype? You here for it? Spring forward. So we lose an hour, but we get more sunshine, right? Correct. We, well, we get more, we get the same amount of sunshine, but you get sunshine later. Okay. Yeah, you get more sun at the end of the day than you otherwise would if we just, you know, kept it unsaved. If it was daylight spent instead of saved. Right. So, you know my tips in the past, right? That people, like you can start slow rolling yourself to getting up a little mm -hmm. bit earlier each day instead of switching all at once. Mm -hmm. So I've done some math. You know how we like to do math on this show, right? Right. Yeah. So if you get up 12 minutes earlier every Sunday between now and then, you're good. Since it's five weeks away. Every Sunday. Yeah. So that means, yeah, if you just got up a couple minutes earlier each day, that would get you there. Okay. But I did the math. So basically, if you get up 12 minutes earlier than you did the Sunday prior, you will have achieved daylight saving switch by the time March 12th came along and you get less jet lag that way. Well, look at that. You think you'll do that? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's a reasonable idea? I do. Okay. I do. So daylight saving five weeks away, which equals 12 minutes earlier every Sunday, and then you're saved. Daylight saved, Kate. Daylight saved. Put it in your bank account. Mm-hmm. Matt, I've got a map. Oh, yay. We love maps on Matt and Kate. Kate. Okay, I've got a map. And it's mm -hmm. all about the Super Bowl. Do you want to guess what the map is about? 
Super Bowl map, best Super Bowl snacks by state. Ah, that's a good map, but that's not this map. Mm. I know. Okay. Uh, who they're rooting for. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is based on geotagged Twitter data and fan hashtags. For example, like Chiefs Kingdom or Fly Eagles Fly. Okay. Yeah. The Eagles have 28 states rooting for them hmm. okay. compared to the Chiefs 22. But you know what? I'm okay with this map. Why is that? Because I'd rather be the underdog. I'd rather be the underdog than the top dog. Oh, we never I saw it coming, and then we win. I thought you were going to say, well, they've got all the crappy states rooting for them, and we got the good ones. Something like that. Well, I mean, yes. See, I was going to guess it was <laughs> going to be the Chiefs dominant because Patrick Mahomes, you know? That's a good, yeah. That's a good thought. Everybody wants to be like Patrick Mahomes. Yep. The, the kids are rocking the hair and everything. Hawaii's rooting for the Chiefs. I was going to say, I was going to say, who's Hawaii picked? Alaska, okay. Philadelphia. That's fine. I know where I'd rather live. Yep. Yep. All right. Any other notable? I, I assume Kansas, Missouri are both all in on Chiefs. It's like a right? big red stripe down the middle. So you've got okay. Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois. Uh, <laughs> are you failing to recognize a state? This is my job to. I know Illinois, <laughs> Wisconsin. Yeah, I think I heard uh-huh. a little bit of an accent on both your North Dakota and your Wisconsin. There, were you was it? North Dakota, Wisconsin? <laughs> okay, South Dakota, Nebraska. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thanks, Kate. So, big red stripe down the middle. Go Chiefs. All right, Kate, they blew it. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey doesn't come out until the day after Valentine's Day. Do you know that? Wah, wah. <laughs> For the unfamiliar, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, the days of adventures and merriment have come to an end as Christopher Robin, now a young man, has left Winnie the Pooh and Piglet to fend for themselves. As time passes, feeling angry and abandoned, the two become feral. Kate? I just... Why? Why? Because it's hilarious. This is funny, isn't it? I think I'm more excited about Cocaine Bear. What's that? That's the true story about a drug runner drops some cocaine into the woods, and instead of his <laughs> partners finding it to distribute, a bear found it and ate all the cocaine and killed people. Oh, Really? Yeah. This happened, this is fictional, yes? No. This happened in real life? I want to say in the 70s. Cocaine bear. Bear did a bunch of lines of coke and then attacked, wow, okay. No, not lines of coke, like pounds of coke. Pounds of coke. Yeah. Bricks of coke. But just ate, ate the coke, didn't snort it? No. I like the image of the bear preparing his cocaine on a mirror. With the rolled up and then dollar bill. Line by line, yeah, exactly. Exactly, line by line. He yeah. probably uses Benjamins, though. I feel like that should be your homework today, to watch the trailer for... I'll watch the trailer for Winnie the Pooh. You watch the trailer for Cocaine Bear. So this is a documentary, Cocaine Bear? No, this is a, a movie. Oh. Elizabeth Banks is the director. There's lots of big names. How long has that been out? I want to say it's out, like, this week or next week. Oh, okay. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Cocaine Bear, I need to search for this so we can tell the listener. When they can see it. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is out February 15th in the majority of theaters, but it does run for a week in some of the theaters and bigger markets. Cocaine Bear. Let's see. Yeah. February 23rd. All right. Cocaine it's the Battle Bear. of the Bears in February. I guess so. All right, well, I'm, I'm rooting for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Okay. At least someone's fictional. This other one sounds scary. Cocaine Yet Bear. Yeah, funny. Based on a true story. I thought you said it was based on a true story. Yeah, isn't it? But it's a comedy? Did you just find something conflicting? So it says, Cocaine Bear is an upcoming black comedy thriller film directed and co-produced by Elizabeth Banks, inspired by the true story of the cocaine bear. There we go. An American black bear that ingested a duffel bag full of cocaine in 1985. I said the 70s. Shoot. Yeah, come on, Kate. What are you doing over there? Ah. So there you go. Some good bear-themed films headed your way. I'm going to, at some point, watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a special trip to the theater, though. Right. Yeah, probably not. Matt, 
We know we've heard of influencers, but have you heard of de-influencers? Where did I hear? I heard something a lot, kind of. I don't know. Someone that okay. hates on something? Gives you, like, not good reviews on products. Yeah. Stay away. Yes. Okay. So that's a big thing on, on the socials right now, de-influencing. Okay. Instead of like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. You need to go out and buy it. It's like, oh my gosh, this is a piece of junk. Do not buy this. Go to Walgreens instead and get it cheaper <laughs> under this brand. Okay. Because a lot of the influencers, they influence and they make money off the things that they're influencing about. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. So how does a de-influencer get paid, do you think? I don't know that they are uh, getting paid as much as people are blowing up their videos because they're like, oh, yeah, this lady used to work at a really famous makeup establishment. And she went through a list of things that are crappy products and don't work well. So. All right. Yeah. The influencing. I'm kind of here for the de-influencers. Yeah. I thought maybe they were taking some money to just talk trash on certain products, you know, like, oh, uh, Coca-Cola sucks. Oh. Get Pepsi instead. Right. Or RC, RC Cola. There is a plastic surgeon, though. He went on there to talk about eye creams that are a sham. Oh, okay. And lip masks that are made up product. So I was like, oh, I'm going to stick around for that guy. But he didn't try to de-influence anyone from getting a bad nose job or whatever. Right. Hmm. Seems suspect. At the end, I don't believe he throws his card like, call me. And he's like, hey, by, by the way, the best augmentation work is done by me. <laughs> trying to think of the right way to phrase that. There you go. For the Ute listeners of Matt and Kate. Kate. Well done. Thank you. Kate, an egg rolled off my countertop and smashed into the floor. Oh, no. So what do you think I did with it? What do I think you did with the egg on the floor? What do you think I did with the egg after it hit the floor and smashed? Well, I'm sure you cleaned it up. But are you asking me if you cooked it or trashed it? Yeah, I guess so. I'm hoping you trashed it. Yeah, I did. Okay. My, my kitchen floor is due for a mopping. Otherwise, I probably would have cooked it. No, you wouldn't have. I know. I lie. Oh, gosh. Eggs aren't that expensive that I'm eating them off the floor yet. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to cook out all the dirt. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's a good point. If you bring it to the right temperature, it'd probably be fine. Then you bite into a piece of grit or something, and that's no fun. Yeah. Bite into some dirt that made its way into the kitchen. That felt pretty devastating. Did you see it happen in slow motion? I did not. So I set them on my countertop, and it's never been an issue before. And then I turned around to... Uh, I don't, I forget what. And then crunch. And oh. I look over and I was like, damn it. Man. But the first thing that popped in my mind was, I'm going to clean that up. It wasn't, well, now I'm going to have to start begging for money. It wasn't that. <laughs> but it, did, it did throw off my egg schedule, though, because now I'm one shy. Yeah. What I'm going to need. Because <sighs> you don't buy a head. A head of eggs? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're confusing eggs with lettuce again, Kate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean by a head by a bunch yeah i mean i still have 12 in the fridge but i'm going to the store so i buy 18 more you know that's a good poem you got going thanks do you have any more lines to add to it i don't think so okay i will buy a i'll buy four dozen at a time okay but a lot of places don't let you do that now if you find right. eggs on sale, which I tend to do, it's limit two. We're both writing poems here, Kate. Look at that. I know. Who would have thought? Many people wonder, what would Matt and Kate do if they didn't have big, successful radio careers? Well, they would be big, successful poets, right, Kate? Totally. Yeah. See us in the cafe wearing our black beret. <laughs> Look at the see? It continues. Oh, oh so good. Damn. Damn, Kate, good job. Thanks. You're welcome. Matt, I almost died yesterday. You almost died? You almost perished? I almost died. What happened? Well, I was dying of embarrassment, but still, oh. I almost died. Embarrassment. <laughs> embarrassment. And that can hurt. It may even kill you. 
Right? Okay, so I was supposed to clean out my freezer to make room for the cow, but instead I went and got a massage. Oh, okay. Well, it sounds like you had a buffer day anyway. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I've got some time. Good for you. But I went and got a massage. I went to a new place that I've never been before, and I, I liked my masseuse. She was great, except for she started rubbing my elbow, and I had no idea that my elbow was ticklish, like the back of my elbow. And then you smacked her? I. It was almost like that kind of a reaction. Like it was almost like a elbow to the face reaction, well, and, yeah. which is hard to do because I'm laying on the table face down. Elbow. And I've got my arm draped and she's got my arm in her hands and she's rubbing my arm and she gets to my elbow and I like really went like spasm because it tickled so bad. Yeah. How'd that go over? And she's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm so sorry. Uh, I've never had my elbow massaged. Right. And so she said it in such a way that this was a first for her. Yes. I guess. Okay. Yes. Uh, I mean, I made fantastic. it to the point where like when she was massaging like my lower back and my hips. I'm like, all right, don't giggle. Don't laugh. But elbow, no restraint, no control. I would never think that the elbow would get a massage. Well, like above the elbow. And then it's like, it was almost like when somebody grabs your knee. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. on both sides of your knee. Yeah. Like it was just like, just the right pressure. Pinch the kneecap. Yep. Cause I was trying to explain it to my girls and they're like, you are so weird that your elbow is ticklish. I'm like, well, here. And I was trying to feel their elbow. And then they were moving kind of like it was a funny bone situation. So I was like, see, told you. (laughs) Told you. Oh, yeah. Not going to get a massage there again. (laughs) No, I was. That was my next question. You're not. I don't know. I felt so embarrassed. Like they didn't sign you up for your next appointment on your way out. They tried. They tried. And what'd you say? I'll probably just call you and make an appointment. They hear that all the time, I bet. Yeah, I was super embarrassed, though. Just because you had a brief spasm? Yeah. To elbow contact? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Just because I almost hit the person massaging me. Yeah. (laughs) That sounded like she had it coming. Right. (laughs) Gotta warn somebody. Yeah. All right, Kate, Minnesota teen has slept in his backyard for nearly three years, just for fun. Just for fun. Yeah. Thousand nights. This kid is now 14 years old. Wow. And he's stayed out there even on nights where the temperature dropped to minus 38 degrees. Whoa. He lives in Minnesota. And his mom's cool with this. He's a Boy Scout. He's a Boy Scout. Okay. Okay. Now, if your girls were Girl Scouts... They graduated from Girl Scouts. Would you allow them to sleep in the backyard for a thousand nights? No. Why not? Well, especially with those temperatures. No, it's too cold. This kid survived. That's good. Yeah. He has a terrible mother. Oh, you think so? (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) I think that's too cold. He will from time to time come in for a bit, though. So he may come in to warm up briefly. So maybe it doesn't count unless you stay out there the entire night. I mean... Is that really sleeping outside for a thousand nights if you come in for a bit? And yeah, come in and warm up for an hour? Yeah, I'm asking you. Is that, do you think that's no longer a valid streak? Well, I don't know. Okay. How old's the kid? 14. Okay. Then I'd probably give it to him if he was 17. I'd be like, no, cheater. <laughs> okay. No, I just think that's too cold. Says, unless it's below zero, I like to stick one of my legs out at night so I don't get too hot. If you're cold, you can always put on layers, but in the summer, there's only so much you can take off. That's true. You get all sweaty, plus there are mosquitoes. Yeah, no thanks. And the 4th of July is the worst. It's noisy all night. Where is this? Minnesota? Minnesota, Duluth, specifically. Okay. Yep. Three years sleeping in his backyard for fun. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm not looking for that particular thrill, but... I would think it'd get old. I would think so, too. I want my bed. Thank you. Yeah. Sticking my leg out to keep cool while it gets attacked by mosquitoes does not sound fun. Right. Matt, just for the pun of it. Just for the pun of it, Kate is going to give us a, what's it called, setup. And then we're going to guess the punchline, dear listener. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. All right. What do you call a guy who has an axe? 
stuck in his head. Guy with an axe in his head. He's a guy. What do you call a guy who has an axe stuck in his head? An axe stuck in his head. Axe guy, dude, man, axe man, man axe, guy axe, axe guy, axe, axe male, axe, ah, axe, etc. No, I give up. What do you call a guy with an axe in his head? An ambulance. An ambulance. I get it. Get it. Because that's a severe injury and you would need medical attention. Right. Ah, Got me good on that one, Kate. Gotcha. Yep. (laughs) 